next question is just if you could give us a little brief, almost a debrief actually, on the types of topical retinoids that you can get on prescription um, and how they would compare to anything over the counter. I mean, I'm sort of aware of the difference. I just wanted to if you could say as a doc for my lovely viewers um, and what you tend to prescribe the most. So I have what I call entry-level retinoids, um, and that's typically something called adapalene, or the, the trade name is different, um, which is a synthetic retinoid developed specifically for acne sufferers because compliance was historically an issue with things like tretinoin or retin-A, um, which work very well but can be a little bit harder to use, certainly at the beginning, um, and anybody who's used a retinoid too aggressively knows you can get dermatitis from that, so an eczema-type change. So I find Differin is a really good entry-level retinoid. And for some, that will be sufficient. They won't want to go on to do anything more. They won't want to you know, evolve the routine into something that enhances their skin quality. So they'll happily sit on Differin because mm. it's easy to use. Um, and you know, it does the trick. So, right, so, so Differin is one. Um, we do have Isotrex. Um, also in combination with erythromycin, isotrexin, um, and that can work quite well, particularly on the more inflammatory patterns of acne. Um, and then we have tretinoin or retin-A, which you know has been around for a long time, mm. works brilliantly, and I will certainly tend to use it more in um, a woman who's coming to me with that mixture, classic mixture of acne, but also first signs of ageing. So would it be appropriate, say for someone like me, my adult acne I got rid of, yep. um, because mine was all definitely food allergy related, it flared it up and I've just, my, you know, my hormones, everything just exploded, that's another story for us to have over a large cup of tea, um, but definitely signs of ageing, so if I came to see you and obviously short of surgery, <laughs> For my lovely baggy eyelids, um, would you immediately say, okay, you can use a Retin A because obviously I'm 45, I'm definitely the wrong side of, should we say, uh, happy perimenopausal people? Um, so if I came in, what would be your sort of first port of call in so much as if, because if I was like, oh, I want some vitamin A, get me something? Yeah, I mean, I sometimes do still use Differin as an mm. entry-level retinoid to, to retinize the skin and it mm. makes it a little bit easier to transition, but if somebody who's got fairly thick, tolerant skin, you don't have a history of reacting to products, of burning, stinging, using anything like a, a mild fruit acid for instance, then I probably would start you off on a low percentage of Retin-A. Um, I like to think that the sweet spot with, with Retinoids, with, with Retin-A use is 0.03 uh, to 0.05%. Um, so often start at a lower percentage and build up, you know, this is a, a marathon, it's not a sprint and yeah. it's much more important to win your confidence and to get you comfortable before we start doing anything too heroic. Um, mm -hmm. So stronger isn't necessarily yeah. better, 3.05 is probably as high a percentage as we need to, we need to do, but actually getting used to that over the course of three months, that's no problem. Yeah, okay. So, is it absolutely the case that a woman who is pregnant can never use retinoids, not just prescription, but non-prescription retinoids. What's your take? I just say no. I mean, pregnancy it's so much easier. is a, you know, it's a special state. Um, if someone has um, acne prone skin, and sometimes certainly pregnancy hormones can rev acne up, we do have good alternatives. Um, so I'm very comfortable using um, azelaic acid as an active yeah. ingredient and I find it works well. It also tends to work well in, in pigmentation issues like the acne-related post-inflammatory pigmentation, even in melasma. Mm. Um, and it actually works quite well in rosacea too. So actually it's a really versatile active ingredient. It tends to be well tolerated. Um, but there's no it, harm to the baby, so they can just crack on. Yeah, it's a yeast extract, so it's the one that we're comfortable prescribing. So I, I, just, I just don't use retinoids in pregnancy. Okay.